If you have a television series that you want to promote, yes. one good way to do that is, as well you know, to get its characters onto other shows. True. Now, that's not so easy in the case of Anderson Puppet Series, <laughs> of course. Excuse Hello? my dog barking. Yes, that's... Uh, <laughs> That's Ernie. Oh, anyway. Actually, I'm just going to tell Ernie to stop barking. Two seconds. Oh, Sorry about that. bless Ernie. I'll be back you sounded like he had hiccups. No, don't Row. do that. Stop barking. Trying to do fab facts. Harsh. Thank you very much. Right. Oh. Okay. Shall we carry well, on? Go on then. <laughs> Now, that's not so easy in the case of an Anderson puppet series, of course, although we did get things like Captain Scarlet appearing on the Christmas Day edition of the game show The Golden Shot back in oh, 1967. Really? Yes, we've covered it ah. on a previous Fab Fact, I think, ah. or is it oh, have article? There have been so many. It's an article on the, on the website, anyway. You can read about that if you ah. just search Captain Scarlet Golden Shot. Uh, generally, though, the Super Mario Nation puppets couldn't really be called upon to make promotional appearances on other TV shows. Mm. However, the hand-operated Terrorhawks puppets could. Mm, yeah. Sometimes, live in the studio, as with uh, Mary Falconer and Zelda, having their horoscopes read by Russell Grant on Breakfast Time. <laughs> <laughs> and Great. sometimes via pre-recorded film inserts. Uh, and it's the latter that we're going to talk about today. Because, oh, yes. in addition to keeping the Earth safe from attacks by Zelda, did you know that the Terrorhawks also had a short-lived career as children's TV presenters. <laughs> I did not know that. Well, now you do what you're about to. Mm. Uh, yep, for the whole of October 1984, a very fine month and a very fine year, the Terrorhawks, as well as Zelda, Youngstar and Sister, and even Stu Dapples, picked up additional work presenting children's ITV, or better known oh. to us in the UK as CITV. CITV, yeah. For those listeners outside the UK, it was a block of kids programming that ran from about 3.45 in the afternoon to about 5, uh, as you would probably guess, for kids' screenings. For several years around that time, CITV would often feature guest presenters who would introduce the programmes for an entire month, sometimes as a way of promoting a series or a project that they themselves were appearing in at the time. Since the second UK broadcast season of Terrorhawks began airing in September 1984, we can assume that they offered the October CITV presenting gig as a way of promoting the show. OK, yeah. So, Ander Burr Pictures filmed 70-ish short links. That's seven zero, Crikey. Or sort of mini-episodes, if you like, revolving around the idea of the Terrorhawks trying to prevent Zelda from interfering with CITV broadcasts. <laughs> of course. As well as introducing the afternoon shows. Although sometimes Zelda and co made the introductions as if it was a show they particularly enjoyed. Amongst oh. more notable shows that the Terrorhawks and the Martians introduced were He-Man and the Masters of the Universe. Oh, yes. Rainbow. I am the power! Yeah. <laughs> Rainbow. Uh, Rod, mm -hmm. Jane and Freddy. Not one I'm familiar with, actually. Oh. Um, oh, right. Portland Bill, Inspector Gadget, Danger Mouse, and the yes. world premiere broadcast of... Yes. Mm-hmm. Thomas the Tank Engine and Friends, as introduced oh, right. by Sergeant Major Zero, played by uh, Windsor Davis, of course. Lovely boy. Ah, oh, great impression. Yeah, you can stay. You. Uh, this went on every weekday afternoon for the whole of October 84, before the Terrorhawks handed control of CITV over to a new host for November, the one and only friend of the show, Bonnie Langford. Oh, is she yeah. a friend of the show? No, I just made that up, but probably would oh, okay. be. Yeah. If she, if, yeah, I mean, yeah, she knew. Course. She's lovely, isn't yes. she, Bonnie? So. Yeah. Uh, now, unfortunately, although we have no definite idea of the final fate of those CITV links or any of the other Terrorhawks film footage that was shot or for similar programmes like the Saturday show and so on, it is likely that the original material no longer exists beyond any off-air recordings that may have been made at the time. Mm. However... Mm. A YouTuber by the name of Marco Polo 31 West, very catchy name, has yeah. on their channel a 22-minute clip featuring audio of most, if not all, of those CITV introductions, which is nice to have. Uh -huh. uh, you'll also find the Zelda and Mary Breakfast Time clip there too. Ah. If you want to see the visuals for these intros on YouTube, unfortunately you're pretty much out of luck unless you can find someone who's uploaded broadcast of a show that aired on CITV while the Terrorhawks were hosting, as is the case with several of the Thomas the Tank Engine episodes introduced by Zero. Uh, now, I, th I have a feeling that some of these have turned up fairly recently, right. possibly since this fab fact was, was penned. Uh, really? So do keep an eye on YouTube. I believe so. I could be wrong. Ah, um, yeah. Anyway, look, even if it's all been lost to history, from, it, lost to history for the most part, 
it's a nice way to promote the show and to, to give the Terror Hawks a few more mini adventures, even if they are just stopping Zelda from interfering with CITV.